I would, I would sort of start almost in with prehistory, which is what I would call the first era of computing, which was a, is a tabulating era, and you've got some great examples here in the museum of Hollerith machines and others, and they were mechanical devices that, that basically could do addition, subtraction, some very simple tasks. But the, the, the next era of computing I, I refer to as programmable, which is everything that we all know today and our whole careers have been based in. And these are systems that you know, fundamentally are von Neumann architectures where you store a piece of information, you use a processor of some kind to do a calculation, and you're moving data, calculating, et cetera. Uh, and the way you control that is through what we call programming. We tell the system, you know, in exotic ways, do this, move this bit, do this calculation. And then we stack that up through different ways and software and build applications that you know, fundamentally do what humans do, but do it much faster. Um, that has been good, and, and we've taken it you know, through 60 some odd years, and we've achieved tremendous, tremendous um, you know, goals with that. Uh, but fundamentally, we had to program the blue genes that did that calculation that broke the COCO genome. Uh, and everything we do today to our cell phones are programmable systems. We realized a number of years ago, almost a decade now, as we look forward, which we tend to do in IBM research over a decade, that it wasn't going to be so much about doing the calculation. The fact that the data was going to explode. Now, it's exploded beyond even our wildest expectations. But it was going to be all about data. And you know, as we look forward now, we're talking about creating the creation of as much data as the entire universe of stars. 10 to the 23rd, 10 to the 25th, it doesn't matter. It's a big number. And the, and the von Neumann computer systems of the second programmable era will be almost useless in that truly big data space. And why is that? Is it just the speed is just the, not keeping up with the torrent of data that's the, the, coming? The, 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 the speed, and we can go in, you know, Moore's law has slowed, so the ability to calculate and keep up with the rate of data growth is no longer there. The energy it takes to move large amounts of data, even within a machine, much less continent to continent doing a business transaction is impossible. The heat dissipation is tremendous. And I think even more fundamentally, it's not about doing a calculation on that data to get an answer. It's about exploring that data. It's about finding new correlations, new context in that data to provide new solutions. That's an entirely different thing than doing a set of calculations on something that you program. And so we set out to build an entirely different sort of computer. Uh, we, we refer to it as a cognitive system or cognitive era of computing uh, because in a sense it mimics some aspects of what the human brain does. It doesn't just calculate. Yes, it has a, a big, fast memory, but the system, you don't program the system, the system learns. It trains the way, in, in, in a similar fashion as a human being. Uh, it can reason, it has some perception about the environment that it's in. And so, as you, as you start to understand more about what Watson is, Watson is really the first computer in that new era of computing. So. You know, as we have the, the stage here uh, for Watson, it's, it's a very important bookmark in the history of computing. In my mind, it's, uh, it's sort of a past reflection on what the previous era of computing was about. But first and foremost, it's a look forward in terms of what's coming over the next decades.